praise right now. Lord, there is none like you. There is none like Come on, lift your voice. Lift your voice to him. Tell him, tell him this morning. Lift his name all over this place. Jesus, there is none like you, God. You are the great I am. You are the king of kings, the Lord of lords. You are the holy of holies, God. The everlasting of everlastings. There is none like you. I'm going to tell you, CRC, I'm not going to lie to you because I love you. That was weak. That was weak. He's so worthy. There is nobody more worthy. I'm telling you, I was watching football yesterday in the playoffs, and there's 70,000 people in those stands going crazy over a pigskin filled with hot air. And we can't lift our voice unto the one who paid it all unto the one who is worthy forevermore we can't be dignified in the house of god it's time to get undignified it's time to start acting like we are saved redeemed set free filled with the holy ghost and fire of god it's time for the church of jesus christ to arise with a shout to arise with a praise with breakthrough in their mouths jesus Jesus, there is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you, Lord. You are worthy. You are holy. There is none above you. Hey, and I'm my soul. Come on, stay on your feet. Stay on your feet. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the Most High God, Shando Ramande. We thank you that you are breaking through the noise of this hour, God. That you are breaking through the lies of this generation in the name of Jesus. You will have your people. You will have your bride. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that you are breaking out right here in the hearts of every life in this building. In Jesus' mighty name, God. You are breaking out like a mighty tidal wave, God. There is an anointing coming forth from this house that breaks every yoke, God. Lord, we are unashamed of the gospel. We are unashamed of who you are. We are unashamed of the movings and works of the Holy Spirit in this house, God. Father, I thank you for the revival that is already here. I thank you for the presence and the glory that has been invading this house. Father, I thank you. Ah, come on, somebody. That what you are doing in this hour, God, we have never seen before. But we recognize you. We recognize the move, God. Father, I thank you for signs and wonders and growth in this hour in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that blind eyes will open. Deaf ears will open. The crippled will walk. Cancer will shrivel and die. Blood orders will go at the mention of the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you that we have eyes to see. We have ears to hear what the Spirit is doing right Right here, right now. Father, I thank you that we ain't seen nothing yet, but we know, we recognize, we fear, and we exalt the move that's in our midst. But Father, I thank you that you are falling in even greater capacity even right now. Let there be a fire fall. A fire fall. A glory wave. A spirit rush of your presence here. Lord, one that will not be for a mm. one that will not be for a fleeting moment or service. Lord, we are asking for habitation. We are asking for you to come and make your abode right here in this altar, in this house, in our lives. Father, I thank you that you are awakening the ancient gateways. You are opening the ancient doors so that the King of glory may come in through us this very hour in the name of Jesus. Father, we are not looking back. We are not looking forward. We are looking at the right now of who you are. And we thank you for the now move. Yeah, come on, lift your voice. Come on. Don't spectate me. I'm in it already. Get in it. We thank you for this final awakening that is taking place, God. 
Father, we thank you for the harvest that is coming through our doors even as we speak in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you that sickness and disease will not be able to stay in this house in the mighty name of Jesus. You are about to utterly amaze us by what you are going to do in this house, in our lives, in this hour, God. We will stand back and be amazed by you. In Jesus' mighty name, God, enough is enough. We are ready. We are in it. God, our hearts are expecting. The soil has been prepared, God. We are ready to walk in what you have said we should walk in. We are ready to operate in what you said we should operate in. I believe that this is the year we will never forget that it will be a day in infamy that they will say that day in 2020 the spirit of God invaded a small place in Tom's River, New Jersey and it spread like wildfire all over the world Father, we believe in you we don't believe in us we believe in you and you have said and you are faithful to do what you have said you are going to do Man, I need somebody that's filled with the Holy Ghost, that's got faith that would move mountains, to jump in with this young guy's faith this morning. I ain't playing church anymore. I am ready for a move of the Holy Ghost that this world has never, ever seen. And I want to get in it. I want to jump in it. I want to bathe in it. I want to move. I want to talk. I want to release in it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. If you got eyes to see. If you got eyes. If you got ears to hear the sound. Because I'll tell you what I hear in my spirit. I'll tell you what's been whispering like rushing waters in my ear. It's amazing how a whisper can be so loud inside of you. It's amazing that the one with eternity in his hand speaks. It's like mighty rushing water. It echoes in eternity. It'll brand you on the inside when he whispers in your ear. And I've been hearing God say, Now is the time now is the time you will see what has been spoken you will see what has been prophesied you will see and you will begin to move i am seeing every sort of disease and sickness vanishing at this altar i am seeing every type of addiction and bondage and oppression getting set free at this altar i am seeing men and women alike coming to know their jesus right here bernadette right here right in front of your eyes you will see this happen wakey wakey church wakey wakey the hour is upon us no longer will we pray the Lord is going to do. No longer will we declare God is about to do this or that. We are going to say this is now. Now is it. This is it. It's upon us. Can you feel it? Can you hear it? Can you see it with your eyes? It is not a time to be away from God. It is not a time to play games. It is a time to burn out the flesh. It is time to be on fire for Jesus. It's time to watch what your eyes see. Watch what your ears hear. Watch what your hands touch. It's time to be burning ones for Jesus Christ. The wait is over. There is no time. The Bible says the devil knows his time is short. Does the church... We play games like we have all the rest of our lives to do this thing. See, the Bible says that the devil prowls around like a lion. But we know one who is a lion. And now is his time to roar. He is roaring over you. No longer will we sleep or slumber. No longer will we be okay with what used to be. No longer will the moves of God of old sustain us. 
I pray. Lift your hands all over this place because I feel this. You don't have to stand, but just lift your hands. Father, I pray that no one within the sound of my voice in this building or through the internet will miss this. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Father, you are raising up an army right here in our midst. You are raising up an army right here in CRC, God, for such a time as this. Father, I thank you for your anointing that's falling even right now, God. But, Father, I thank you that as your word is declared, you will begin to fall like a wildfire in this place, God. Father, you will begin to permeate. You will begin to saturate, God. You will begin to ignite the deep things in everyone here in Jesus' name. Father, the old will break off. The new will arise in Jesus' name. Father, the old wineskins will completely be destroyed. And we will be filled with the new wine, the new bread, the new oil of this hour, God. For what you have for us now in 2020, what you have for us now in this generation, God, the word that will break open heaven over this nation in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that everything we put our hand to will set fire. I thank you that everything we put our hand to will be healed. Everything we set our hand to will prosper and break through in the name of Jesus. Father, you are doing something bigger than us, bigger than our ability, bigger than our imagination, God. You are about to utterly amaze us. In Jesus' mighty name, can you believe, church, that everything you put your hand to will be healed? Can you believe that everything you touch will be set ablaze in Jesus' name? Can you believe that you carry the deliverance that this generation needs? Do you believe you have a word in your belly? Because there's one in mind that's about to explode. Do you believe that what you carry is greater than this atmosphere? It's greater than the prince of this air. It's greater than the lies of this generation. Mark, do you have to be so loud? Somebody ought to. You always got to shout and sweat. Come up here and I'll let you feel what's on me. It is time for us to stop playing church. It is time for us to stop playing happy, clappy religion. It is time for us to stop having 30-minute services, shake someone's hand, and go home and jump back into sin. It is time for the church of Jesus Christ to arise and be the church outside of these walls and realize that when we're in these walls, we are in absolute revival 24-7, not waiting upon a thing. He has done it all. Say, he has done it. He has done it all. Waiting for nothing. I'm not waiting for nothing. I'm asking him to expose and raise up and anoint what's already within me. Would there be a cry in this hour inside of you that says, God, ignite the things of you. Burn out the things of me. Raise up your own power within me. I'm sick of my prayers falling to the ground. I'm sick of my loved ones being unsaved. I'm sick of laying hands on the sick and watching them stay sick. No more. No more. No more. Your children are going to be the first fruit. Your hands are going to heal everybody you touch in Jesus' name. Are you ready for what God's about to do in this hour? Are you ready to prophesy? Are you ready to release the word of God that's deep within you? It is time. It is time in Jesus' name. It is time. It is time. You can sit down. But I guarantee you're going to be up again in a minute. Man, I'm ready to lay hands on everything that moves here this morning. We're going to leave time for that. We're going to leave time for that. Man, I feel an anointing of crazy, wild. 
I'm telling you, miracles are going to break out in here, Mom, and they're never going to stop. They're never going to stop. They're never going to stop, John. The things you've been hoping to see, you're going to start seeing through your own hands in life in Jesus' name. The prayers, it's done. It's done. The prayers have been heard. We have come together in this hour and we have believed is God not a God that answers? Is God not a God that answers? The Bible says that when the righteous cry out, he what? He hears them. He answers them. My Bible says we serve a God that answers by what? Fire. Cry out. He answers you with what? Fire. Uh, <laughs> maybe the problem is we haven't been crying out. Maybe the problem is we don't believe that what we've been crying out was heard. Maybe, just maybe, God's sick of us repeating the same thing instead of standing firm in faith that it's already done. Maybe he's answering. Maybe we're the generation that doesn't just see our prayers, but the prayers of a hundred generations before us come to pass. Maybe we are alive for such a time as this, Donna. Maybe you were brought in for such a time as this. God, we're, mm, Shanda. Some of y'all have been wondering why you're here. You're about to find out. You have a part. You have a role to play. God is raising you up for such a time as this. Mark my words. If you would, if you would just give it up. If you would just say enough of me. All of you, it's time to get out. God is looking for those that will burn, 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 burn. I don't care what people tell me I'm a Jesus freak. I'm like, you bet I am. You're a holy roller. Yes, I am. I'm a tongue talking, devil rebuking, sick healing, gospel preaching, Bible believing. Holy, rolling, Jesus freak. On fire. Unashamed. I don't care who's watching. I don't care who's listening. I'm on fire for Jesus. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. We are going to burn what a fire this world has never seen. God is sending something the church has never seen. He's doing a new thing in this hour. If you like the old, you're going to miss it. The time to forget is now, and the time to step in is now. Listen to Habakkuk 1.5. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me preach. I want to tell you a story first. I'll tell you a story. It's a true story. I read it. <laughs> we've been praying and fasting this week hallelujah what an awesome week every night was dynamic but let me tell you god did amazing things in the corporate setting but if you should have been fasting the whole week whether way before 7 p.m i'm telling you god did such things privately individually in the secret place in my heart and in my spirit this week you see, fasting doesn't get you more of God. Fasting gets more of you to God. You see, fasting gets us out of the way. It gets our flesh out of the way. It gets all the, 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 the distractions of this hour out of the way. You know, shut Facebook off. Shut the TV off. Get in his presence. Get alone. Get in his word. Watch what happens. People don't like this preaching. You like that I'm going to tell you the fire is going to come. You want to know how to get it? Get alone with the one who is a consuming fire. Get alone with the one whose eyes will pierce you. Get alone with the one that when he speaks, it brands you on the inside. When he speaks, nobody else needs to tell you who you are and where you're going. Man didn't have to tell me I was an evangelist. I hear people come up to me, Mark, this prophet said I was a pastor. This prophet said I was a teacher. This prophet said I was going to be a prophet and this and that. I said, what is God saying to you? Stop listening to man and listen to the one that authored you. 
Conference, 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 word, word, word. Get alone with the word. Made flesh. Uh, I'm trying to preach a little different. Let me tell you a story. There was a church that called for a prayer and fasting a few years ago. It was in the Midwest in a small town. It's the beginning of the year, just like we did here, they called for a prayer and fasting, and they began to press in, and they began to pray, and they were meeting, and they were praying. And they began to pray, just like we were praying here a few nights ago, God, shut down the bars. God, shut down. And there was a major, one major bar club in their city in the Midwest, and they were praying, God, shut it down. Empty it. Bring them to the church, God. Praying, crying out together in one accord. And wouldn't you know that very night, that bar caught fire and burnt to the ground. The next day, the church started boasting and rejoicing that their prayers had been heard, that God shut down this bar. They started giving God credit for this great thing. The bartender heard wind of the church saying that they were the cause of this. So he sued the church. He brought the church to court. Now, once when they go, this case goes before a judge. It's a true story, y'all. I read it. This case goes before a judge. And in front of the judge, the church says, well, how could we have possibly set his bar on fire? How could we have been responsible for this? And the bartender was saying, well, y'all said you were praying and fasting and you were asking God to shut down the bar. Back and forth. And the church was saying, it's impossible. How could we have done this? The judge stops and he says, I want to speak to both of you in private. So he takes the pastor and he takes the bar owner into the back room. And he says, I've never been more confused. He says, I have a bar, a bar owner that believes in fasting and praying, and I have a whole congregation that does not. <laughs> Do you believe that what we have been doing is being activated? Do you believe that what we've been fasting and what we've been praying, God is hearing and he is answering right here, right now? Because I believe it, I feel it in my bones that what we have been declaring is not on the horizon. It is a right now thing. It is a movement that is taking place right here in this hour. We are not waiting for anything. During this week of prayer and fasting, God took me on a journey through his word. And I want to just share some of it with you. Some of you that were here this week, you might hear one or two scriptures, but I'm going to put it all together. Go to Habakkuk 1.5. If you don't know where Habakkuk is, it's after Nahum. If you don't know where Nahum is, look in your concordance. It's before Zephaniah. The books of the Bible you're in all the time, right? <laughs> Listen to this. God took me to this when I was in prayer by myself, and I just started weeping and got rocked. And I started asking God for more revelation. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 5. It says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. Come on, somebody, hear the word of the Lord this morning. In your days. Say, in my days. This is not something that another generation is going to see. This is not something that a generation that is in the ground is going to see. This is for our eyes. This is for our ears. We are alive for such a, such a time as this. We are going to stand and watch and be utterly amazed. I mean, blown away at what God is about to do in the nations of the world. Can you say amen? amen. This is not going to be church as usual. I want to tell you this morning that we are up for an upgrade. That God is about to take us from the old of where we've been and take us into the new of what we've never been in before. How many have an iPhone? iPhone users, wave at me. You know when those upgrades pop up on your phone? How many like those? No, we don't like them, right? Why? Because when we do it, all of a sudden our phone is different. All of a sudden we got to learn how to use it again, right? 
But as we begin to learn how to use it again, we realize, wow, this is better. Wow, I couldn't do that before. Wow, this is so much easier than it was before. I'm telling you in Jesus' name, there is an upgrade taking place in the church of Jesus Christ right here in this hour. I'm telling you, you may not like it at first, but after you get recognized to it, after you begin to say, wow, I get it. This is better. This is easier. This is something I could have used last year. There's an upgrade taking place right now. Say goodbye to 1.0 and say hello to 2.0. We are being upgraded in the Holy Ghost. We are being upgraded and transferred into something new that we have never operated in before. But you're going to have to wipe your slate clean. You're going to have to take everything that you think you know about a move of God, everything you think you know about what the anointing should look like, and go like this. <sighs> Because this is not going to look like anything we've ever seen before. This is not going to sound like anything we've seen before. We are going to see the supernatural of Almighty God in our midst. And we are not going to be able to label it. We are not going to be able to perceive it. We're just going to have to stand back and be utterly amazed. It's time for the church to go, whoa, whoa. are going to be moments in his glory we cannot touch yes. there is going to be moments in his glory where we dare not speak a word yes. there are going to be things happening in our midst that are so god that are so supernatural that are so divine we're just going to have to whoa 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 whoa, whoa. whoa. Whoa, 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 dare not even look upon it, because if you look upon it, you may go home. I'm saying moves that we've read in this book will pair in comparison to what the book we're about to write. Some of you are like, this is blasphemy. I don't really care. As I began to ask God, explain this to me, God. Explain this to me. What does it mean to be utterly amazed, God? What are you going to do? He said, even if I told you, you would not believe it. See, that's why the Bible says God will do exceedingly more than we could ever hope, ask, imagine or believe in Christ Jesus. It's time for us to see that scripture come to life right before our eyes. He's going to do more than we could even imagine, more than we can pray for. We're about to see it right before our eyes in Jesus' name. The hour is upon us. You prayed it and declared it for years, and now I'm preaching it, and you're like, I don't think so. You better believe it. There is no time to waste. We are going to preach this gospel with a fervency. Uncompromised. So I said, God, explain this to me more. Instead of speaking and writing on the wall, he took me to Matthew 13. As I was dwelling on this, and God, what does this mean? He took me to Matthew 13, 16. And I love how God answers. He still leaves it open for a discussion. Because he wants to know if we'll have faith to believe it. He wants to know if we would believe the unbelievable. I said he wants us to know if we would believe the unbelievable. That if our natural would become the supernatural. That our lives would go outside of our natural means by faith alone. The Bible says he's scoring the world to and fro, looking for someone he can pour his spirit out upon. This says when he looks, will he find faith? Right here, God. The Lord took me to Matthew 13, 16, and he said, blessed are your eyes. Say, blessed are my eyes. Blessed are my eyes and your ears. Say, my ears. 
God said, but blessed are your eyes, Mark, because they see and your ears because they hear. I said, God, explain this to me. What does it mean to watch the nations of the world and be utterly amazed by what you're going to do? He said, blessed are your eyes because they're going to see. Blessed are your ears because they're going to (laughs) hear. Alive for such a time as this. Do you think your salvation was an accident? Do you think your life is a mistake that is a lie from the pit of hell? You have been anointed. You have been filled for such a time as this. You are purposed by God. Your life is filled with destiny. And you are alive right now to be in this great move. You could have been born 300 years ago, but you were not. I always wonder about that because my favorite movies, and I love history, they're all from way back in the day. It just seemed like things mattered more then. I'm like, God, why couldn't I have been alive in the medieval times? Why couldn't I have been alive and fight in World War II, God, like with those great men? But no, I was born in 1981, and here I am a preacher in 2020. Why? Because God positioned me. He purposed me. He formed me in my mother's womb for such a time as this, and he did the same thing for you. You are not an accident. Everything has been purpose. The steps of a righteous man or woman are ordained by God. You have been here with purpose. You have been divinely set up. (laughs) Your eyes, your ears are being aligned to what the spirit of God is moving, saying, and doing right here in our midst. Are you ready? To lay hands on someone in a wheelchair and watch them jump up. I've seen it, but I'm ready for it to take place every single time. You see the Bible, did did Jesus, is there anybody he laid hands on that didn't recover? No. And Jesus said, what greater things than these shall you do? I believe that we are coming into an hour. We are coming into a season before his great return where everything we touch, Jesus will be released upon. And when he is released upon it, forgiveness, redemption, healing, the baptism, deliverance, it will be released in a moment through the hands of his servants. The body of Christ will be a hospital to the sick again. It will be a deliverance station to those that are bound and addicted. It will be a place of hope. It will be a place of freedom once again. No longer will the church look upon CRC and mock. They will look at it and say, there is something happening there. Bring your grandmother. Bring your son. He's bound by drugs. Bring him there. Something is taking place. Hundreds are getting set free. Thousands are getting healed in the name of Jesus. You see, signs and wonders always pointing the way to growth in the Bible. You better believe that signs and wonders are going to take place in this house right here with us before this harvest takes place. The signs and the wonders and the miracles are what's going to lead to this harvest. That is what's going to cause this growth is when God is exploding in this place. Good Isaiah 43. (laughs) Y'all believe this? Y'all believe this? Do y'all believe this? Do you believe that it's happening right here, right now? I have been feeling God pulsating, literally pulsating in my bones this week. Pulsating like the breath and the pulse of God on the inside of me saying, now, son, now, son, now, son. I have such expectation in my spirit for 2020. Does anybody else in here feel the rhythms of God's spirit? Does anybody else feel that we are on the cusp of the greatest move of the Holy Ghost this world has ever seen? Marty, do you believe it? It's going to be so cool. Just like in Daniel's time, he's going to shut the mouths of the lions. The liars, the naysayers, the backstabbers, 
the backbiters, those that will talk against this move of God will not be able to even move their mouth because they will have no accusation. God will shut the mouths of the lions in this hour. The vipers will be silenced. Their tongues will be torn out. Nobody will be able to speak against the move of this holiness. Nobody will be able to speak against the move of God's spirit in this hour. Let they be struck by fire. I'm telling you, we're about to see moves of old. You will not be able to say that's not real. That's false. That's this. That's that. The taste and see and you will be transformed in a moment people will begin to curse it and they will fall under the power of god he will shut the mouths of those that have he will have his people he will have his bride he will have this harvest and that harvest is going to come through the church of jesus christ it's not going to be like god's going to play a magic flute and people are going to start skipping down the road to the church there's going to be something supernatural taking place inside of the body again. There's going to be a pull. There's going to be a draw. <sighs> Isaiah 43. Oh, my God. Whew. Isaiah 43, verse 18. In the New King James, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. I'm telling you, wipe your slate clean. Every bit of religion you think you've seen, every bit of the anointing and move of the Spirit you think you understand and perceive, forget about it. Be open to what God is going to do right here, right now. The new wine, the new oil, the move of His Spirit that will transform us first. We can't give what we don't have. What's going to transform this generation is going to take place in the house of God first. You better believe it. It's going to take place right here. And it's going to take place right here this morning in Jesus' name. If you don't want the wildfire of God to fall on you and transform you, you're in the wrong place. God is looking for those that will say, here I am, Lord. Send me. Fill me. <laughs> For behold, I do a new thing. Now. Say, oh, say now. Yeah. I love when God says now. Now it shall spring forth. Does that say tomorrow? Does that say 2025? It says now it shall spring forth. Will you know it? Will you know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The places that have been dry, the places of Methodist churches, Baptist churches, Catholic churches, those that have been dry, desert places will soon flow with the river of God's spirit. God will have his church. He will have his people. Even the dry places will be saturated with his spirit once again. What do you think he's going to do in a house like this? Woo, you better find out. Listen to this in the message. This is fun. Forget about what's happened. Don't keep going over old history. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It is bursting out. Don't you see it? <laughs> listen. Listen to this. It says it is bursting out. Don't you see it? For there it is. I'm making a road through the desert and rivers, even in the badlands. Can you see it this morning? Do you have eyes to see that you're alive for such a time as this? That your life is marked with purpose, that it is marked with destiny. That God has called you for such a time as this. And he is just looking to put his anointing upon you and send you forth to be this vessel in this great move. I'm telling you, there's going to be turbulent winds in this building sometimes that are going to throw people up against the wall. Don't get scared. It ain't the devil. It's the Holy Ghost shaking somebody free. Well, that person didn't fall in the spirit like I've seen it before. Forget what you think you know. The Bible says it's the same spirit. Those of us that are filled will recognize it as the spirit of God. Trust me, there will be no false spirit in this house. We will recognize the move. It is the same spirit. I've never been in the same service twice, but I'm always like, sounds different, 
feels different. But I know that I know that it's my God. Forget about what you think you know. Forget it. The ways you used to deliver won't work anymore. The way you used to lay hands on the sick, it won't work no more. God is releasing something new. God is releasing something into us that sometimes I've had dreams where I've looked at people and they've dropped to the ground. No word, no touch, just a look because the fire was in my eyes. The breath of God walked by somebody. Freedom. My shadow heal on the sick in Jesus' name. We read it. We'll do it. Go to Psalm 24. This is fun. What a mighty God we serve. I said, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. I'm just taking you on the journey God took me through this week. And I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know that I know that we are doing this right here, right now. Someone say right now. And it includes me. Oh, see, that got a little more quiet. Say, it includes me. Say it with a little faith. It includes me. Hallelujah. Psalm 24. You there? The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false. He will receive blessing from the Lord. And vindication from God his Savior. Such is the generation Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek his face, O God of Jacob. We are a generation that will seek his face. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the king of glory may come in. Who is he, this king of glory? The Lord Almighty. He is the king of glory. Now I want you to listen to this in the Passion Translation, starting in verse 7. You ready? You want to hear this? Listen to this. Psalm 24, verse 7 in the Passion Translation. It says, so wake up. So wake up, you living gateways. You are the gateway. You are a living gateway right here, right now. It says, lift up your heads, you ageless doors of destiny. Welcome the king of glory, for he is about to come through you. Man, some of y'all aren't listening anymore. I need everybody right here, right now, right here, right now. Wake up and listen to the word of God. That was the first word of this was wake up. Wake up. Don't let the evangelist come out right now. Wake up. It says that the king of glory is going to come through you. You are the ancient gateway. You are the ancient door. Wake up and realize that this is you. It's you. Don't let the devil lie no more. Don't let those around you lie and say it ain't you. It's you. You are the doorway. Who's to say God couldn't birth a revival through you? Yeah, you, man. Who is to say you wouldn't be the vessel if you would just say, yes, God, all that I am. And he would mark you in such a way that you would be that door that Jesus would come to this generation through. Who's to say I used to be a drug addict in jail, man. Here I am because I said yes to Jesus. And now I'm a gateway for his glory. Now I like. Who's to say it couldn't be you too. Takes a yes. You are the gateway. You are the door. Lift up your head. Wake up and see that he comes through you. Yeah, you. I don't care what anybody's ever said to you or about you. God says it's you. 
You're anointed. You're equipped. You're alive for such a time as this. You are the ancient doorway. You are the gateway that releases his glory into the land. You are the chosen vessel that Jesus said, I want to come through. I want to go through them. I want to enter through them. I want to change the generation through Dominique, through Michael, through Yvette. I want to use you. Be my gateway. Who is this king of glory? It's Jesus. Is that good preaching? I think that's really good preaching. I didn't even finish. I'm going to lift this. I'm going to read this one more time. I said I'm going to lift it because that's what I'm doing. I'm preaching bigger than this building, guys, because what's going to take place is going to reach the nations of the world. Who's to say that you're not a nation shaker? Who's to say that God's not going to send you to the nation? One touch of his presence, one touch of his anointing will transform you for life. I never thought I'd be touching the nations, but I got under the fire of his faucet. He poured down upon me and he transformed my life. One touch of the Holy Ghost will transcend you, transform you, equip you, and send you. If you would just realize it's you. I never thought it was me. Stop with the false humility. I need a microphone. Stop with it. <laughs> Oh, God, not little old me. What a lie from the pit of hell. Yes, you. He formed you. When you call yourself little, you're calling God petty then. He looks at you in greatness. He looks at you in perfect design. He looks at you in exactly what he wanted to form. He didn't make a mistake. We didn't mess it up. Whatever we messed up before the blood, the blood put back into right sins. I'm righteous, not of my own accord, but by the blood of the Lamb of God. My works of a filthy rag, but now I'm clothed in robes of righteousness because of the grace and blood of Jesus Christ. He looks down at me and says, that's a vessel. That's perfect. That is somebody I can use right there. It's you. It's us. The time is now. No longer waiting. My workplace doesn't even know what's about to happen. <laughs> Why? The Bible say Christian Revival Center is the gateway? No. The building, the vineyard, assemblies of God? No. We, you, me, hallelujah, we are the gateway. That means everywhere we go, the king of glory is coming through us. He is entering in to this generation. He is entering in to the atmosphere around you through you. You're the doorway. You're the gateway. Yeah, Gene, you. Sorry, buddy. I love you. Daddy's loud. I know. So listen to this one more time. You ready? I'm going to read the whole thing. I didn't finish it last time because I got so excited. It's so good. I love the word of God. This is verse 7. And this is the word of uh, uh, verse 7 in, in my Lord, Shamande. Shorobosi karanai. Oh. oh, he says, so wake up, wake up, you living gateways, you living gateways, lift up your heads, uh, enough of the church down in the dumps, lift up your heads, you ageless doors of destiny, isn't that wonderful, welcome the king of glory, for he is about to come through you, you may ask, who is this glory king? He is the Lord, armed and ready for battle, the mighty one, invincible in every way. Verse 9 says, so wake up, you living gateways, and rejoice. Fling wide, you ageless doors of destiny, for here he comes. 
The king of glory is ready to come through you. You ask, who is this king of glory? He is the Lord of victory, armed and ready for battle. The mighty one, the invincible commander of heaven's hosts. Yes, he is the king of glory. And he wants to come through you. He wants to be opened up and released through you. Will you release him? Will you be a generation changer? An atmosphere shifter? Oh, we're going to go to one more portion of scripture and I'm going to close up. We're doing good. It's not 1230 yet. Y'all got 10 more minutes for me? Say, Mark, you're preaching great. Mark, I needed to hear this. Mark, I believe this is right now. I believe that you're talking about me. Darn right I am. Go to Acts 5. And I'm so excited that we're getting into Acts, Mom. Because listen, this is what God's about to do right here in this house. Listen, I said this is what God's about to do right here in this house. Right here in this house. And we are this house, right? This house is not a shopping plaza. This house is us. Every single one of us in this building right now that say, I belong to CRC. This is you. It's you. Actually, let me, that, that's such bad. That's bad. That's bad. I take that back. This is for anybody that's in the body of Christ. That is completely sold out. But I believe that God is going to do it right here, right now. Because we are called to be forerunners. We are called to run this race first. We are called to lead the way. And if you're part of CRC, you're a forerunner. You are a leader. You are ones that will pave the way in glory and destiny in the anointing. I'm not following anybody but Christ right now. I'm sorry. Some of y'all still looking for a prophetic word somewhere. <coughs> Listen to Acts 5, chapter tw- uh, verse 12. Chapter 5, verse 12. It says, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. Say, through the hands of the apostles, many, many, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Again, just like on Pentecost, in one accord, which means in one spirit, means in unity. That means nobody was greater than the next person. They were in unity in the spirit. All of the apostles were doing many signs and wonders through their own hands. You see, it's going to be so cool when I come in here from being overseas in crusades and I tell you about the signs and wonders that God did, how blind eyes open, deaf ears open. And you say, Mark, guess what God did up the road from my house? Blind eyes open, deaf ears open. That was done through me too. I can't wait for the entire body to stop, uh, to start operating in this. It ain't going to be about a man on a stage. It ain't going to be about a woman leading the way. It's going to be about Jesus having his way in his people. He will get the glory. The king of glory is coming through you. You can't heal a fly. But when you open up the ancient gateway that you are and let the king of glory come through you, you better believe that he comes with healing in his wings, deliverance in his mouth. The baptism of the Holy Ghost comes with him. Pam, when you open yourself up and let him out. That's why the devil wants us all introverted and shut in. That ain't what... Let him out. Now this, I hope, will not be you. Yet none of the rest dared join them. God is not looking for spectators. He's looking for those that will open up. That will open up the gates. Hallelujah. But the people esteem them highly, of course. And listen to this, verse 14. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes, say multitudes, of both men and women. Hallelujah. So they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. 
Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all, all, all healed. Every single one of them were healed. Every single one of them were set free. Even those that couldn't get hands laid upon them and the name of Jesus spoken over them. The apostles carried something greater than themselves. That even when they just walked by, if they were in the, the vicinity of their shadow, they would be healed in Jesus' name. I'll tell you what, there was nothing special about Peter's shadow. He carried an anointing as big and as wide as his shadow. Your shadow will be empowered by whatever overshadows you. You see, he carried something. That even when he just walked by in a Wells Fargo, John, his co-workers dropped. When he walked by in an airport, the security guards didn't frisk him. They fell. When he walked through ShopRite, the people didn't try to check them out. They got healed and they checked out Jesus. Yeah. You see, you're called to open up. You see, Reinhard Bonnke said that we're not spiritual banks, we're faucets. He said we're just supposed to open up under the realms of an open heaven and let the king of glory flow through us. You're not supposed to sit in a chair and in a conference and get fat, 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 fat. You are supposed to stand before your God and open up the doorway that you are. Open up the gateway that you are and let the king of glory. When you bounce your grandchildren, they might not even be able to talk yet. I believe my son's already received the touch of God because I've held him and felt the anointing so strong when I've held him. I'm a doorway. You're a doorway. And I'm telling you, there is an encounter taking place here in this house that is going to transform this nation. You see, according to Acts 5, signs lead to wonders lead to growth. Reinhard Bonnke said that signs and wonders and miracles are the doorway to salvation. That they open up people's faith to believe in a God that they never believed in before. When blind eyes start opening and deaf ears start opening, how can one far away from God to deny that there's something great happening in their midst? And when we say we did it in the name of Jesus, you better believe that faith begins to arise in that name, that salvations will start to take place. God is going to break out in this house in signs and wonders through each and every one of us. We are going to see miracles here that we've never dreamed of seeing. God is going to do something so big, even if he told us, we wouldn't be able to believe it. But you better believe it. He's about to do it, and it's going to lead to the multitude coming to know him he's looking for those that will say god i'll be that vessel i'll be that doorway god operate through me god let my shadow heal the sick let there be signs and wonders pouring forth from me because you better believe if crippled start walking right here in this little building that a blind eyes start opening, cancer start going, tumors start dissolving, blood disorders get healed right here. Word's going to spread and people are going to come through those doors that nobody told to come. Signs and wonders lead to the growth. Somebody say amen. This is what the church needs. This ain't a regular church sermon preached. There's something here that's going to take place. I have one testimony to tell you and then we're going to just pray. This was in China. Someone say China. Amen. Say Mark, I want to hear this. 35 years ago, there was only 1.5 million believers in China. You might say, Mark, that's a lot of people. No, not when compared to that, there's over a billion. That's a very, 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 that's like 1%. There was 1.5 believers in China 35 years ago, and there was one chief communist delegate that was persecuting and pursuing the church like Saul of old. He was responsible for shutting down and murdering so many Christians in China and causing fear to spread across the land that nobody was willing to receive Jesus Christ because they were in fear because of this one man. 
Wouldn't you know that this one man developed nose cancer so severely, this delicate, this communist delicate developed nose cancer so strong that the doctor said it's spreading all over your body and there's nothing we can do about it. You're going to die. He did, he had money. He went to doctor after doctor, all the same result. There's nothing we can do at this point. The cancer has spread throughout your entire body. This man got wind in his ear that the people he, were, he was persecuting had seen cancer healed in their buildings. So he contacted one of the local pastors that was deathly afraid of him, told him his story and said, would you pray for me to be healed? Wouldn't you know that that communist leader got healed of every ounce of cancer in his body in Jesus' name? In the past 30 years, China has gone from 1.5 million believers to over 100 million. One miracle transformed a nation. Now, I want to explain this to you a little bit more. That's 20 to 35,000 believers added a day. Wake up! Wake up! 25 to 35,000 believers added to the church every single day for 30 years. Every day. Not like, oh man, we had this awesome revival service, man, two years ago. It was amazing. A hundred people. No. Every single waking day, 30,000 people came into the kingdom of heaven. But it started with a sign. It started with a wonder. It started. And it opened the door for the multitudes to come in. I'm telling you, the multitudes are about to come in. But it's going to come in as we open up and let Jesus operate fully through us. When we allow signs and wonders, when we are fully, I am fully convinced that this is me. You need to become fully convinced that this is you. I know, I feel it in my bones that 2020 is about to explode. And I'm not just talking, I know overseas God's doing something awesome with me and he keeps growing it, but I know right here in this nation, right here in this house, I feel God is about to break out in America. It is a revival that they're not gonna be able to label. They're not gonna call it the third great awakening. It is the final awakening. This is gonna last until Jesus comes back. This ain't gonna fade. This ain't gonna die. Man can't kill what God's about to do in the land. I said man can't kill what God's about to do in the land, Paul. We're not going to talk about, you remember that move of old? You remember when God moved in Tom's River? We're never going to talk like that again. It is going to be ongoing. It is going to be continuous. We are ushering in the great move of his spirit that will bring in that end time harvest that will usher in his return. And we're alive for such a time as this to be a part, to be that vessel, to be that one that says, yes, here I am. It's you. It's you. You're going to be writing prescriptions that say, have a dose of Jesus. <laughs> People are going to come for you for pills, and they're going to relieve, receive a healing anointing in Jesus' name. They're going to get the gospel pill. All right, good. I made you smile at least on that one. All right, that's good. Whew. Stand to your feet all over this place. Y'all awake? Y'all have an anticipation in your spirit? John, uh, Nancy, play the sweet presence of Jesus quietly for a minute. That's okay. Let me just, thank you. Thank you. Some things I want to do that the Lord's been speaking to me.